The jury in the Hunter Biden gun trial has been dismissed for the day after failing to reach a verdict. Joe Biden's son faces three charges related to the possession of a gun while using drugs. He's pleaded not guilty to those charges. Joining me live now is former White House Chief of Staff and now Bondi Partners consultant Mick Mulvaney. Mick, thanks so much for your time. This is another unprecedented trial. Uh, a president's son has never been on trial in this way in the US. What ramifications are there here heading into the election? Yeah, well, I suppose one of the ramifications is we need a new word other than unprecedented, because I think <laughs> we use that word now over and over again. I honestly don't think, however, Laura, for all the media attention it's getting, I don't think it's going to have much of a political um, impact. Keep in mind, the Republicans are, are not sure how to handle this particular trial. Um, Hunter Biden is charged with falsifying the records that he filled out, the documentation he filled out when he purchased a handgun. And what he essentially did is checked a box saying he wasn't using drugs. But he was admitting to other people, in fact, admitted in his own autobiography that he was using drugs at the time and was mm -hmm. trying to, uh, to get clean fr fr from that particular addiction. But at the root of this is that addiction. And the Republicans are really not sure what to do once the decision comes down. Uh, my guess is they'll stay as far away from it as they possibly can. The chances of conviction here are fairly good. Hunter had to convince the jury that he either made an honest mistake or really didn't believe that he was an addict when he filled out that particular document. Um, it does beg the question as to why this case went to trial and why Hunter didn't plead guilty to something smaller, but that's a, another story for another day. It's going to get a lot of media attention, rightly so. It's a very mm -hmm. high-profile case, but I don't think it's going to have much of an impact on the politics because neither party really knows how to handle it. Yeah, even Trump himself is not really talking about it all that much in his rallies. And then there was that uh, really honest and heartfelt statement from uh, Joe Biden as the trial got underway. And if there was, if, you know, if I was to be a cynic and say there was a, a political element to all of that, uh, Joe Biden perhaps tapping into the fact that there are many people who either have been in the situation that he is in with a drug addicted child or they have a family member who has been. And keep in mind, one of those people is Donald Trump. People don't remember this, but his brother um, was was an alcohol, was addicted to alcohol and died uh, from complications related to that. So it, it hits Trump in a personal way that it hits many, many people. I thought President mm. Biden's statement was exactly what I would have said, you would have said, Donald Trump would have said, which is, you know, as a president, I feel this way, but as a father or a, or a parent, I feel differently. It's a very touching statement. Um, uh, but again, a very difficult topic to take up politically, which is why I think most folks are going to be happy when this is over. Yeah, I think so. Let's uh, talk about the polls now. Where are they at? The national polls and those six or seven swing states that are so crucial here. Oh, it's great. Um, we haven't had really good polling yet since the big conviction, right? We've had some preliminary polls. They've started to come out in the last 24 hours and they're all over the place. So if you're the Republicans, you can look at polling and say, oh, well, Donald Trump hasn't lost any votes. And if you're the Democrats, there's some polling out there saying, well, Joe Biden sort of closed the gap. But the margins, Laura, are so narrow. Yes, there are some significant margins now in some of these swing states. There's some suggestions that, that Trump might be up by as many as five percentage points in Arizona. That's a big deal. More than 10 percentage points in Georgia. That's a big deal. But overall, the polls haven't changed much, and it's still an extraordinarily tight race. What does this tell us? Either people have already made up their mind either for or against Donald Trump before the conviction, and the conviction didn't move the needle at all, or he's lost some votes because of the conviction and he's gained some votes because of the conviction. How would that work out? There might be white suburban housewives in the Midwest who don't want to vote for a convicted felon, but at the same time, maybe there are folks in the minority community now who think that Donald Trump can empathize with them and their inner relationships with the government and how they don't trust the government as much in a way that Joe Biden cannot. So um, whatever the whatever the, the cause, mm. the polls have not moved much, and I don't expect them to, at least until that first debate, which is now coming up with us in the next three weeks.